And is it in Turkish or? It is, in, it is in Turkish, unfortunately. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hope it will so be popular and translated. <laughs> you the gist of what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. So let's welcome person and look forward to talking to you. Right. And yes, and one feedback which we got from a lot of uh, and a lot of people was that we want uh, we want more of the folks who we can really uh, you know relate to. So person has just started off. So the idea is that we can relate to his story. What he has, uh, what he's been doing. So he'll not be talking retrospective, but we, but we'll be talking out of his experience in the last few months here and there, right? So. Thank you. What do you? I just so opened the li Facebook live feed. That's why I'm holding this one. Right yeah. There you go. If you could hold it first. Sure. I'm also recording myself because honestly, it is a very big privilege to be talking to you guys, especially at this university. And uh, just a small introduction about myself. My name is Bertin. Ragav sent my biography to me. I'm an entrepreneur, trainer, slash author of a book called Entrepreneurship Stories, where I basically tell my own story. And I was here for a Model United Nations conference, actually, for the last three days. And I have a friend who studies here, she's Kanza, and she hooked me up with Ragav. And thankfully, we managed to arrange this session. And today I'm leaving Oxford, unfortunately, but I had a really, really good time being here. So the session today is called Hacking Your Way Through as an Entrepreneur. First of all, this session is not a theoretical session. You could hold that vertical right now, which would be better. Better? Yes, <laughs> sorry. Okay. It's not going to be a didactic session where I'm going to speak for the next 45 minutes. I'm going to speak for 15 or 20 minutes. I'm going to tell my own story. And I know how busy you guys are, and I know how intense it is for you guys here. So I'm going to try to make it as interactive and as fun as possible. And hacking your way doesn't mean that I'm going to tell you cheats or tricks on how to be a successful entrepreneur because honestly there's no cheating to it. You, 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 you need to work really hard, you need to know your why you're doing it and keep motivated and never give up because there's no failure. And I'm um, the founder of Bosper Story Hub, which is the umbrella training company that I'm using for my training. And I own a hostel. Well, I own two hostels. One, I bankrupted. And I, <laughs> I am my second hostel now. I hope that I'm not going to bankrupt it again. And I'm the author of the book, Entrepreneurship Stories, which has been published today. Funny thing is, my book has been published, but I'm not even in Turkey to pick it up. So I haven't seen it yet physically myself. Who are you again? I'm specializing in entrepreneurship, public speaking, time management, traveling, stress management, and expatriates. Generally, I give my trainings in Istanbul, in Turkey, but I also travel abroad to speak about such topics. I have delivered more than 200 trainings. I'm 29 years old, by the way, but I have been doing this training stuff in NGOs, especially since I'm 18. So I have a lot of experience on that. But I mean, it doesn't mean I'm a really good trainer. It means I'm trying to be a good trainer, and there's a lot to learn on the way as well and I do it with great pleasure. I mean, if I had to choose one job that I want to do, it would be public speaking. I really like it. And why should we listen to you? Very understandable. Because I lost more than $7,000 on my entrepreneurship endeavor, so I can, <laughs> I can give a lot of <laughs> insight on what not to do, because I did all those. I face a prison charge, not because I have a criminal record, or not because I evaded the tax, but because I had some, I missed some uh, bureaucratic procedures during my entrepreneurship story. And I have been conned not one, more than a few times. This is the cover of my book. Because in Turkey, when you say, I have a book, people think you're the guru of that topic. So in Turkey, people are very impressed on this. But <laughs> I know in England, in Oxford, a lot of people write books, so you're like, yeah, fuck up. <laughs> but yeah, I'm very proud of it. I just want to say this. It has been published this week. It was in the book fair this week, and I'm really looking forward to come and pick it up because I don't even remember what I wrote in it now because I started writing it last year. It's basically my story as an entrepreneur. The program will be I'll tell my story for five minutes, and then I'm going to tell my five hacks for an entrepreneur, and then we're going to proceed with the QA session because, as I said, I believe very much in interactivity, and I would like to spare at least 20 minutes for questions and answers and have your insight as well. So, my story. Two years ago, I decided to be an entrepreneur. 
I did my political science uh, degree, I went to the army, I came back, did a three months backpacking trip, and then I did a six months of corporate experience. Hated it, because not because it was a bad corporation, but because it didn't match my values, basically. I said, I quit. I had some money in stash, so I said, I want to go two ways. I want to professionalize and make a trainer, I want to be an entrepreneur. What to do as an entrepreneur? I travel a lot, and in Turkey there are not many hustles, to be honest. So I said, why not open a hustle? But I did it the wrong way. <clears throat> the first also, I had no idea how to do it. I didn't know about the bureaucracy, I didn't know about the procedure, I didn't know even how to own a hostel. So what I did, I checked a Turkish e eBay website where people were selling their hostels. And I found this building. I went there, asked how much it is. They said they sold it to a guy from New Zealand already. I met with the guy in three months, we became partners. I gave around $15,000 to the guy to own half of the hostel. But I missed a lot of stuff on the way. In one year, we shut down the hostel with $30,000 loss and a lot of psychological suffering as well. These were ranging from really bad accounting because the way I calculated my uh, profit margin or future profits was like I counted the amounts of bets on possible how many customers would come. I multiplied it per month and I thought that would be my profit. But I really missed a lot of uh, details in this because from the taxes you pay, from the things you have to deal with, from the unforeseen cost, it is never as you imagine on paper. So you have to make a worst case scenario. And I did not make a worst case scenario. And worst case happened. Uh, to, from bad accounting to really lazy employees, to dealing with some bureaucratical issues. Because the, the moronic thing that I did here was, I bought this hostel even though it didn't have a license to run a hostel. And my idea was, I would get the license anyways. But then <laughs> I went to the municipality. Well, they came to me. They said, you don't have a license. I said, I'll get it. They said, you cannot. It's in a, it's in a residence area. So I paid $15,000 $15, for nothing. It was like, phew, gone. The only thing I had to do was to go to the municipality. Is this suitable for a license? No. OK. But I didn't do that. I paid $15,000 uh, first. And it has been a really expensive MBA, guys, believe me. <laughs> And also to a very bad landlady, which was abusing us all the time. Actually, this is a better photo to describe how my, little, <laughs> how my landlady looks like. So at the end, there was a lot of suffering, psychological, financial. And I'm not a frivolous spender. I really pay attention to my budget. And losing all this money made me feel really bad. So I lost $30,000 in that. But this is not the only money I lost. I also lost $40,000 somewhere else as well. $30,000 I lost as an entrepreneur. It's acceptable people lose more. But $40,000 I lost, I lost because simply I'm a very big moron. I'm not going to go into the details, but I gave it to a guy who said he would manage the money for me and then give me monthly profits. So I gave this money, but at the end I'm still dealing with this guy to get my money back. He stopped giving me the monthly profits at some point, and now I can't even get my main money back. So I have lost $70,000 in a bit more than one year. So congratulations, person. <laughs> and this is how I felt. I'm a very huge Game of Thrones fan, so I always use this depiction to show people how I felt in this process. But thanks to the season six, like the last season, it was season six, I guess, yeah. there's even a better uh, gift that shows how I feel, felt in that uh, <laughs> situation. This is basically how I felt. So that everything was coming on to me, and I had no idea what to do about it. But the key point here what is, I guess, that you have to stand up and swallow it and learn from your experience and try to do better next time. Because I know people that fail one time, five times, 10 times, 20 times. It doesn't mean you won't fail again, but if you're smart or open enough to learn your lessons, then you'll do good. But you always have to fail at least once. So I failed. I had a stomach ache for a few days, didn't want to get out of bed, but a friend of mine came to the hostel in Istanbul and said, we have to do one in Izmir. After six months, we did one in Izmir. But this time, I learned from my lessons. I took care of the bureaucracy, I took care of the employees, we did it from scratch, and it was our baby. So we paid attention to everything, and this was our hostel in Izmir. And we still run that hostel, and we make good profit out of it. Apart from the last year, where these terrorist attacks have been happening in Turkey, and there are really less tourists coming to Turkey, but that is something out of our hands, so we can't really worry about it. But we have a fully fledged, successful hostel that we're running. But this loss did not only allow this; it, all, it also allowed, uh, it also helped me to proceed in my <coughs> career as a trainer. 
because I started delivering classes on entrepreneurship based on my experience and people really liked it. And since January we've been doing this and I have delivered more than 20 classes similar to this, a bit longer in general. And these are the amount of people that started coming to our trainings. If I didn't lose that money, most probably this wouldn't have happened. So maybe it's going to earn me millions of, I'm exaggerating, but earn me millions of dollars in the future, this is only $70,000 loss. Instead of laying down and doing nothing, I decide to stand up and go on with my loss because I can't turn the time back, right? <coughs> What's done is done. And now I'm proceeding in my career as a trainer. I have my own website, I have my book, which I'm very proud about, but this doesn't ensure that I'm not going to fail again. And But I have learned a lot through the hard way. If I did more research, I didn't have to have all these sufferings, but apparently, uh, what, whatever it is, it is. So, this is my story in a very short nutshell. If you want more details, we can always keep in touch via Facebook, email, whatever, but here I also want to talk a bit skill-based. Because during my entrepreneurship and behavior, there have been a lot of times that I also succeeded in uh, pieces by pieces. And also I see myself successful in the general picture as well, because I do what I like. There have been a few times where I have went out of conventional methods, which really took me to the road to the success. And that is what I actually want to share with you guys today. That's why I called it the five hacks. But this doesn't mean, again, that I choose the easy way, but it just means I chose an unconventional method. I was very stubborn, I was very optimistic, and I achieved something at the end. For example, my first hack, getting a government grant of $25,000. Turkey, as many countries, gives uh, grants to SM SMEs, small and medium enterprises. And this is called the uh, COSCEP, it is again SME funding agency, something like this. So what you do, you go to a course for a week, which is terrible, you get really bored, but you have to take the diploma, and then you fill in an application form for 20 pages. And then you give the application form, they tell you if they like it, or if you have to edit something, and you, you finish it, and then they call you and they say, please come, give a face-to-face -face presentation. But there, they say they want to find more about the content. But I have realized, because this is not a political institution, but obviously this is a Turkish institution, so you have to speak about your why more than your what. So I went to the presentation hall. It was a place like this, but only with three judges. So there were like 10 people, because they took someone every 15 minutes. And everybody went there to talk about their what. So one guy came. He said, I'm very confident because I have this, I have that, I'm going to get the grant 100%. So he entered to the room, he came out very sad. I said, what happened? They, he said, they're not satisfied with my presentation, I didn't get the grant, left. Second woman, she was stressed because of the first guy, entered, then exit, and what happened? They didn't find it sufficient enough, I didn't get the grant, exit. And the stress was growing on me as well because I was in the fourth line. Third woman, entered, exit, very sad face, what happened? They didn't get it, and my turn. I said I ought to be a bit unconventional here because if I talk about the document all the time, they're not going to listen to me because they're tired of that. So I entered. I generally listen to them. They ask their questions. They want to talk a bit, comment on it. One woman said, oh, my, girl, my daughter stayed at a hostel. Oh, great, blah, blah. So it was more of a chit chat because they read that document already. I didn't need to repeat it. And at the end, I planned a very small speech in my hand. That, would, that I thought would benefit them, me, and make them understand why I'm doing this. So I told them, okay, look, there are three reasons why I'm an entrepreneur. One, to constantly develop myself. Two, to provide employment opportunities and a very comfortable space for people that come. Three, and that was a place where I pierced them right in the heart, to represent Turkey in the international arena because we host 50 foreigners every day and this means 50 ambassadors every day. And quiet for a minute. And I said, okay, thank you, we're going to call you. And I left. And then one day, they called me, they said, you got the grant. If I told them why I'm doing this, or my profit margin, or my calculations, most probably I wasn't going to get it, because they were tired of hearing it. But what I said, I talked about my why, why I'm, why I'm doing this, and how this could benefit them. So the lesson I learned from this, what they say they want, is not always what they want. My second hack, exaggerating what you do, but of course in line of ethics. I heard from a very uh, important figure for me, he said, you can exaggerate things, but it has to be in line of ethics. For example, when you put, your, put on your CV, master in customer service, after one year of wage expertise. People like to exaggerate, and that's okay. I mean, you shouldn't write you speak Chinese if you don't speak Chinese. 
but you can pump it up a bit. And that's what I try to do. And sometimes my friends make fun of it all the time. Because, as an example, I was in the army, as I said, and when my, when my army mandate has finished, I, put, I posted this photo. I wrote a text this long, saying this was a great honor to serve in the army, I learned so much, blah, blah, blah. After reading text, you would think like I, I entered the war, I jumped out of parachutes a couple of times, but all I did actually was this. I was a receptionist. <laughs> <laughs> And my, <laughs> and my close friends really made fun of all this. Of me. But again, I mean, I was in the army, it was proud, so I didn't lie. That's okay. Also, something similar I did in this conference, because as I said, I attended the modern United Nations. And what I did, I put it on my Facebook page of my training company, which has 10,000 followers. I said, Perchir, make fun, drop entrepreneurship stories, he's going to Oxford to get deliver a class. There's no lie in it, right? But somebody might also think that I've been appointed as a professor to Oxford as well, so from whatever. <laughs> So, a little exaggeration goes a long way, guys. But this doesn't mean that you have to exaggerate too much. Just you have to sell yourself. And, of course, you shouldn't lie. I never lie on something I say. I never cheat people. I'm just exaggerating it. But sometimes it's funny because my close friends know that it's bullshit or that it's not as it is. And they make fun of me. My third hack. This is very important for me, at least. How asking questions gets you there. Sometimes you get things you want without even saying anything. For example, in the Izmir hostel, my friend who came to Istanbul said, let's do this in Izmir. I didn't take him seriously first, but in one month he called me and said, hey, I found the building. Come and let's see. And it was a real nice building, central, at a fantastic location, and cheap. Like, once in a million uh, opportunity. But we heard that the owner of the building is a really rich businessman, and he doesn't rent his building to any anyone because he doesn't need the money. And there have been like four or five people who came, and he didn't want them as renters. So we were planning to meet them. We went to a restaurant where his assistant <coughs> took us. He just made a 10-minute pre-interview to see if we're eligible to meet the guy. And then he took, they took us to a car. We drove half an hour somewhere outside the city. It was like a mafia movie. And then we met the guy at a very high-end restaurant, like 10 people with him, drinking. Uh -huh. He's like a 50-year-old guy. And we sat next to him. Very stressful. It's like I'm meeting the Prime Minister or something. And then <clears throat> he started talking. 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I was just asking questions. Because he's a successful businessman, and he wanted to be heard. He wanted to talk about his achievements. So I was, uh, I was trying to ask the correct questions on the way. I was asking him, so how did you become a, su a successful businessman out of nowhere? Because I knew he grew up in a village. And he really wanted to talk about this and ask him more questions. And he was asking me questions in return, and I was telling but I wasn't interfering, I didn't tell my story. I only told it shortly when he asked. I was asking questions, because, as I said, he needed to be listened. At the end of 45 minutes, because the talk lasted for like 50 minutes, 45 minutes he told the story, five minutes he said, so, what do you want? Is the rent okay? So he accepted us. I didn't say a single word about uh, the hostel or the renting. And then I only said, if you could like decrease it 5% more, it would be great. He said, done. I give the hustle to you. I give the building to you. Without saying one single word again. People need to be listened. This is the same for job interview. If you sell something, if you promote your enterprise, if you listen to the guy 90% and the last 10%, if you talk about business, there is a higher chance you get it. Because if you say what you want in the very beginning, people get defensive, even though they're willing to give it. So listen to people, active listening is very important, asking the correct questions in the right time is very important. That's how it got me into many places and that's how it made me an entrepreneur in Izmir as well. And this book, I really recommend, Power Questions. I would recommend you to buy it and read it. It's a 200 pages book, so not, not that, that big. But it would, it would be very useful. Written by Andrew Sobel and Gerald Panas. Lesson learned. If you ask the correct questions, you don't even need to say anything else to achieve what you want. This is one of the key things I learned in my entrepreneurship uh, endeavor. Hack number four. Meeting the most famous trainers in Turkey. Maybe in the Facebook Live, coincidentally, if these guys are watching me, I'm sure they're going to comment on it because I tell this story all the time. So as a trainer, as a guy who wants to professionalize in the training field, what you do, you connect with people who are really successful. So there are like five, ten really top trainers in Turkey. Like these trainers, they earn like ten thousand dollars from a two-hour speech. They're really important. As a, like imagine Tony Robbins, John Maxwell, Simon Sinek. So these are Tony Robbins of Turkey. So this guy is called Kenal Islamoğlu, a very high esteemed trainer. Speaks to tens, thousands of people. 
every day. This is called Fazl Oral. He also gave a TED speech in Turkey, a very important uh, trainer as well. He's a chief learning officer in Deloitte in Turkey. And that's Evan Kuran, uh, a trainer on generational differences, very successful as well, very speech on TED conference. So what I did, I have Googled training companies in Turkey, and I've written the same message to them, but I didn't CC them all. I've written, okay, I CC them apparently, first. <laughs> I have sent an email to them saying, hello, my name is Persian, I do this, I want to do this. This was two years ago. And I also included Kemal, Fazl, and Evrim in these emails as well. But I didn't include Evrim, sorry, that was something else. So I sent them to training companies. And Kemal Istanbul, the famous guy I was talking about, he replied to my message in 26th of June, 2014. He said, uh, I'm available at this time in July, in three weeks, would you be available? And then I sent him my first email. I said, sure, would be great. And then I sent him a second email I, as a reminder. I said, I couldn't get a reply from your email. Uh, could you please reply in a very polite and formal tone? And then he said, I'm too busy. Let's meet in two months. I was like, two months? <laughs> Seriously. And then we postponed the meeting to August. And then meanwhile, I got an email from Fazl, the other important trainer that I was mentioning. Meanwhile, I was reminding Kemal Samoli in August for the second time that he didn't reply to my emails. But what I was doing, I wasn't sending an email each day. I was sending an email every two weeks, every one month, because I didn't want them to call the police and say, hey, we need a restraining order to this guy. So I was trying to be as diplomatic as possible. And then Kemal and Fazl, apparently they're friends, because I mean, these people know each other. And they say, we want to meet you together. But these guys only have like five days per year free. And if they want to meet me together, that is like impossible. And I said, no, sure. And then meanwhile, I was reminding them for the third time. And Fazl Oral, the other trainer, finally replied after one month. He said, yeah, I would love to meet, blah, blah, blah. And I started reminding them. I reminded them. Fourth time, fifth time, sixth time. And if you look at the dates, it is once every month. So I was putting on my calendar, like, remind this guy, remind this guy, remind this guy. Again, not too often, <coughs> not too rare. And meanwhile, I was sending more emails to more training firms. I get a few responses only. And that's generally what I experienced. Even like when you do job applications, if you send 50 job applications, you get a reply from 10 of them, and two of them say, let's come and meet. And maybe if you're lucky, one of them says, okay, you're hired. So you have to keep going. So I was keeping going. I kept on going. Reminding for the seventh time, and the date is 17th of October 2014. So it has been like five months, six months already. And I get another reply. He says, I have back to back trips five times. Let's meet in November. Yeah, great. Reminding for the eighth time, for the ninth time, for the tenth time, and the month is December. So it's always 2015. Some emails every now and then. Reminding for the 11th time, Happy New Year. I, I, I finally got a date from the guy. He said, let's meet on Wednesday. Because these guys, you cannot meet them in one week. Like sometimes if you're lucky, they're uh, free for half an hour tomorrow. So you have to be there. If not, wait for a year. And then I got a date, but I was abroad. So I said, can we postpone it? He said, no, <laughs> we can't. So it has been postponed for a few months as well. And then, I got a meeting. What I did, I sent him an SMS on Friday, and he said, come tomorrow to the office. So I finally met him after, I don't know when I met him, in February, so after eight months. And now, it was Kemal's turn. Meanwhile, after a few months, I wrote to Fazl as a follow-up to our meeting, saying, I did this, 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 after our meeting, just to remind him that I exist. The meeting was very nice, actually. He suggested all these kinds of books, videos, what to do, so it was a very important meeting. And then I got a meeting from Kemal as well. Actually, he had a two-day training called How to Control Your Life, something like this, How to Steer Your Life. And he invited me as a guest for free, even though it was a very expensive training. So I managed to meet both of them after, on 15th of June, 2015. And I sent them an email below. I said, I wrote to both of them, hello, Mr. Kemal, hello, Mr. Fazl. Finally, before one year ended, I managed to meet both of you. Thank you very much. And Kemal, the guy that I was mentioning, he attended some of my trainings then as a free, like he came for free just to speak because he saw, he saw it as a social project. He came to two trainings already and this guy is someone that you have to pay $10,000 if you have a company and you want to speak at your company. So the first email I sent was 26th of June 2014 
and the second I sent was 15th of June 2015. So after one year emailing, I finally met to get to meet both of them. And Erin Kran, she was easier. I added her on Facebook. I said I want to meet. In one month we met, and she's also very helpful. She invited to my conference. She sponsored my book, and all they're all great people. So lesson learned: never give up. I think I'm the flash example of never give up because many people would say, "Fuck this." They don't care about me after the third email. But I didn't, because I didn't take it personally. And I met all these three very valuable people. They didn't uh, not send me email, not because they didn't care. They were too busy and they have other priorities. But once they met me, then I became their priorities. Now I can just call them and say, can we meet next week? Last, um, I'll wrap up in five minutes, but this is very important. The importance of why. If you know Simon Sinek, he has a book, Start With Why. Read it. This is the idea. It is many people focus on what when they do something. What? We sell computers. What? We, do, we sell cars. But why? When you answer the question why, then this is how you become successful. Because then you have the energy and motivation to wake up every morning. Then you have the energy and motivation to tell your, the people what you believe and to be successful at it. I'll tell you a very short, uh, I'll, show, I'll draw you a very short graph. I won't be able to elaborate on it, but as I said, the start with why idea is before you focus on your what, you focus on your why. And Tony Robbins, most of you know Tony Robbins, I guess. If you don't, please watch his videos and read his books. He has something called six human needs, where he focuses on four physical needs and two spiritual needs. So one is safety. Sorry, my excuse my handwriting. Uh, variety. Love, connection, significance. The idea is if you focus on those, you're not going to be happy. For example, if I do something to be significant, because when I started to be a trainer, I did it to be significant because girls loved it and guys were appreciating it. But then it wasn't enough at some point. Because I can be significant very easily if I have a gun. Okay, you don't know me, but if I put my gun in your head, I'm very significant for you at that time. So I can buy my significance with money, with prestige, with power, with violence. That's why politicians who are focusing on this generally are bad politicians or unsuccessful. What it says, you should focus on five things. I mean, these are, these are theories, of course. These, not, these are not universal truths. Uh, one is development, growth. Always learn, always develop yourself. If you're the same person as you are last year, you'll be depressed. Six is contribution. In Turkey, the main problem we have, when we do something, we ask, what is the benefit to me? When you think like this, you're not getting anything. Then we have start turning to win-win situation. If I give you something, you'll give me something, and we'll both win. But if you focus on doing something, contributing something, just without any expectations, that's where you're getting everything, guys. Because then it will give the true energy to be successful and happy, and it will make you happy. Because buying stuff, buying cars, buying uh, clothes, it will only make you happy for one or two days. This is a trick. You will release endorphins and other hormones when you actually contribute to someone's life, and when, and when you continuously develop yourself. So, my summary would be, because I've taken enough time already, To be a successful, successful entrepreneur, it's not rocket science. You have to work your ass off. No other way. You should never, ever give up because shit will happen. I was very stupid. A lot of shit happened. I hope you won't have as, shit as, as much as shit as, as I have. But I learned a lot from it. So it was my destiny, maybe. And third, understand your why. As I said, I became an, an entrepreneur for the wrong reasons. I became a trainer for the wrong reasons. And I wasn't satisfied. But now I'm learning my correct reasons because I want to develop myself, I want to contribute to the world and to the people. And then, that's where I'm getting the most of it. And that's why I have my book published in six months, I'm delivering, I have the honor of even giving this speech in one of the best universities in the world. If I was thinking the other way, I wouldn't have done it. To wrap up, actually I wrapped up. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, there is no hacking your way through an entrepreneur, you have to work very hard. You have to know your reasons and you have to learn from your failures. If you want any more details, you can always contact me, Facebook, email, we can deliver uh, contacts. But now the last 10-15 minutes, I would love to uh, separate for the question and answer session. Thank you very much, guys.
Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, questions? Yes. Um, so, 